Hello everybody, I am Tracy Ford and I would like to welcome you to our second installment of the Stages of Chaos. The second step that we're going to talk about this evening is denial. It is very closely associated with the first step which is shock. In fact, a lot of times they can accompany one another. If they don't, the denial usually follows quickly after shock. The dictionary defines shock as the refusal to believe in an existence or reality of a thing. But what I want to talk about today is psychological, the psychological aspect of denial. Sigmund Freud said that denial is a psychological defense mechanism. That is when someone is forced to face circumstances that they are not comfortable with they tend to not accept those circumstances. They reject whatever the circumstances may be in spite of the overwhelming evidence and they deny the situation. The particular view goes along with trauma theory which we've basically is what this whole stages of chaos has its roots in for me. When something comes as a shock to us, the logical thing to happen is for us to not believe it. And even though the facts are there, we still tend to not believe it. It's easier for our minds to deny than to accept a situation. According to Anna Freud, denial is a mechanism used by an underdeveloped mind. It impacts our ability to cope with real life circumstances. She goes on to say that when someone is faced with a situation like death or termina terminal illness or rape or any other traumatic event, the person who has a mature psychological mind may first deny the situation, but they will eventually overcome it and grow. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross even used denial as the first of five stages of the psychology of dying in patients. This also applied to those in the family of the dying patient and could be associated with loved ones that were having to face that someone they cared about had been diagnosed or was dying. So is denial good or bad? In my opinion, it is a coping mechanism, so I am on board with that. And without coping mechanisms, we can't change. The first impulse is to be shocked and then deny what is happening to us. Psychoanalysts believe that denial is the very first stage in the coping cycle. In this theory, denial allows us to expand our minds and develop, and as I said, grow. Sometimes a situation happens in our lives that is just too painful to comprehend at that time. Our brains have a built-in defense system to allow us to digest circumstances and stay healthy. Denial is the way that this happens. Any kind of trauma triggers denial. Eventually, time will march on. And with that, our brains, <clears throat> excuse me, will settle into what has changed in our lives. How quickly do we move through denial? That depends. If someone has been raped, they're going to need therapy to help them move through the stages of healing. If someone has lost a loved one, they too will need help coping with that loss. When someone is diagnosed with a terminal illness, they are going to need help preparing themselves for what lay beyond this world. With denial comes stark realizations that things can and will change whether we like it or whether we don't. Most of the time we don't want to change. However, I've, I have said this all along, in order to grow we must change. For me, it was the loss of a job, a career I had worked in for over eight years that is what trigger, triggered denial in my mind. As I spoke last time, shock settles in first, soon followed by denial.
which is where we are today. I could not believe that I had worked so hard to advance in that career to have it stripped away in one swift motion. It meant that all I had worked for was crashing down around me. It meant a complete lifestyle change for me. It meant facing possible destitution and being unable to keep things running as normal. Denial is powerful, but even more powerful is our will to survive. That is the third stage of chaos, fear and survival. Specifically, fear and survival can walk side by side one another just like shock and denial can at most times. It is when denial fades away that our instincts start to kick in. The fear of not being able to provide or, to, or the fear of losing someone we love overtakes us and eventually we need to survive and overcome fear. I believe in studying for this series. I have found that I owe those of you that are solid in the Christian faith a sincere apology. As most of you know who followed me through the Bumps in the Night series and Spiritus Walking, I was raised in a fundamentalist faith and a Christian Bible believing faith. I simply lost my way and we've talked about that some too. I threw my hands up at all of it and then in 2012 I began the journey towards enlightenment once again. Not so much in the church but trying to understand and make sense of the teachings that I had gathered from childhood and, and young adulthood. Life moved forward. I found my career. I advanced in my career and now it's gone. Everything I'd come to understand in the world suddenly didn't make sense anymore. So in the loss of my job, thus the loss of my income, I was forced to look at other things, namely my faith and my inner strength. Guess what? Guess where that led me? It led me towards God. It led me back to my roots. I, it took me right back where it all began when I knelt at the altar as a child and then again as a young teen to look up toward the only answer that had ever been constant in an un inconsistent world. Fear is a very natural instinct. Fear is what keeps us surviving. Fear of circumstances, fear of change, all of those things are very normal reactions to fear. But it is still not how God wants us to live our lives. He wants us to survive. He wants us to be overcomers. He wants us to live our lives in faith and grow. So guess what? Sometimes in order to grow, we have to be broken. Even though it doesn't look like we're going to survive, it's when we're broken that we will learn to lean on God and His promises. I put something on Facebook the other night, and I believe others can relate to this. God knew what to do to reach me. I was walking in faith, yes. I was leaning and understanding different aspects of spiritual life. But my job was taking pieces of my soul. And that is the one thing that we cannot afford to lose, is our soul. So what did God do? In order to save my soul, He forced me through a door that I wasn't ready to go through. Or that I didn't think I was ready to go through. Then he made himself known through the love of others. He showed me mercy through the generosity of his followers. And I will be honest with you, I have not seen that in a really, really long time. Someone who was able to say, 
I'm going to do this for you and I want nothing in return because this is what God says I need to do. Right now my life is up in the air. I can't make plans. I can't see the future. I don't know what the future holds. I can't even understand some of the things that are going on. But what I do understand is that God had to bring me out of something I was comfortable with and make me uncomfortable. He had to break me so he could put me back together the right way. Please understand I'm not downgrading other faiths. I, I would never do that. I believe each faith has its roots in divinity and it's not my place to judge. I would never ever do that. I am just saying that coming back under God's purpose is what I needed to do and he knew what it was going to take to get me there. Next time we will be talking about anger and resentment which is the fourth stage of chaos. The fact is we have to move through all of these emotions in order to find our resolve to learn and to overcome. And anger and resentment are a part of us. That We are human. And God doesn't want us to be angry and he doesn't want us to be resentful. But it's very hard for the human spirit not to feel that way when it feels like we've had something done to us that's not right. God said we would struggle. He didn't expect us to live easy breezy lives. Christ suffered, so why wouldn't we? We do suffer, but we can also lean on God's promises to us. The most important that he won't leave us. He won't put us in a situation and then walk away from us. He will always provide a way of escape. And he will help us overcome. The kicker is that he will take the glory which he should. So if your circumstances make an abrupt turnaround, you didn't have anything to do with that. You probably had something to do with that. In other words, you made a decision to do something, to overcome, to move through denial. But he is the one helping you move through that by his faith and the faith that you have in him. So we are walking this human journey right now and that isn't easy. As I've said over and over again, we are souls wrapped in skin and no matter what is happening to us, God is there. He never lost us. Even when we've been wandering around wondering where in the world we should be going or where we're supposed to go, He's kept track of us all along. He's never lost sight of us. He's always had his hand in whatever circumstances are being faced. Wrap your mind around that. That shows you how much you mean to the Creator. That he's always had a hand in whatever's going on. Waiting for you to either come to your senses or seek him out in a more profound way. Something wonderful is about to happen. Believe in his promises. Yes, we're going to face trials and problems, but without those, we'll never grow into what God wants us to be. With that, I want to say thank you for watching, and I pray that this helps others. That is why I talk about these things. I want to help others know that they are not alone in this fight. And trust me, it is a fight. It is a daily fight. So with that, have a great day. Love and light to you. And most of all, God's blessing on you. If you have questions, you can email me or you can comment on this post. My hope is to have one of these posted each week so that we can move through the stages. It should be about a seven week, probably a six week series. So I want to thank you again for tuning in. I hope this helps someone. Sometimes we have to do things like this to help ourselves. So thank you for listening so that I, was, I can help myself as well. 
Have a great day. Thanks.